morning, everyone. My name is Mikey Vlahinos. I'm a senior application engineer at Entopology. And today's Entop Live is going to be on meshing, some a couple tips and tricks to help improve uh, meshing more so for fluid volumes, but you can definitely apply these techniques to, to solids as well. And we'll also look at a current method for generating an inflation layer or boundary layer mesh uh, on, your, on your fluid volumes. You might recognize the uh, geometry we have on screen. Uh, the last time I showed it, we went through a process of how to set up node sets to then export as boundary conditions and pull them into, let's say, CFX or, or ANSYS Fluent so you could um, define your, your boundary condition services beforehand. So we're going to take this a little bit further and look at how we can take um, this mesh that we used last time, refine it a bit, and ultimately put an inflation or boundary layer um, on it. Kind of the way that we go about this, um, as far as the inflation layer, is we're going to end up using the ramp block to do that. You might be familiar with it. If not, um, we have a lot of good documentation on, on the ramp block in general. But before we get into that, we'll, we'll start kind of at the beginning of how we're going to um, get to our, our final products, uh, which is kind of this guy here, or at least one of them, where we have a pretty dense mesh and some inflation layering uh, on the interface between that solid and fluid uh, domain there. There are two general techniques that we can use to go from our implicit body to a volumetric mesh. The, the first one, we use our mesh from implicit body block. And this will just give us your general, um, you know, uh, STL mesh or, or surface mesh on your body. And then you can do some refinement steps from there. The other technique uh, we can use is the voxel grid from implicit body. Um, this will obviously voxelize your implicit body. And then from there, um, you can start to put your surface mesh on it, put your surface mesh on it and do refinement from there. Uh, typically, we try and encourage people to use the second approach to so the voxel grid from implicit body. Uh, typically meshes a bit faster. Um, and also will tend to have fewer elements and vertices as well. Before we, uh, in, in both scenarios, before you get into that, that step, uh, another good technique we suggest to use is the smoothen field block. What this is gonna do is it's going to uh, do a tiny bit of defeaturing for us. Uh, and it's essentially going to, all it's really going to do is remove some of these hard edges that we have, uh, where, you know, when we ultimately print it, we'll have a nice smooth curvature or radius there um, anyway. But all this is going to do is help us control, um, you know, or potentially limit where we're going to have intersecting um, elements and just make the mesh downstream a little bit more robust. So we take whatever fluid volume or surface or implicit body that we want to mesh, we put it into our smooth and field block or smooth and body, their uh, equivalent blocks, uh, choose a small grid size. And in this scenario, uh, we only want to do really one smooth and operation. The more smooth and operations we do, or the, uh, the higher that iteration number is, the more material uh, we're going to remove from that part. So rather than just having <clears throat> you know, this light blue removed, uh, it's going to be uh, uh, quite a bit more than we see there. But all that's gonna do is give us a nice smooth curvature uh, and help us um, you know, generate a cleaner mesh. And the other benefit of this as well is when we do voxelize it, since we uh, aren't meeting at a hard point or hard edge, uh, that's going to help improve the, the voxeliz voxelization of the overall volume as well. So once we've done the smooth in operation, we move into the either mesh from implicit body or the uh, voxel grid from implicit um, body. Well, we'll primarily just focus on this second one, the voxel grid 
from implicit body. So we voxelize it. We choose a nice small voxel size. Uh, we do eventually need to put a surface mesh on that. So we do that just simply by the conversion from mesh to voxel grid. And then we move through our typical um, steps for refinement. We do a remesh, we refine the mesh where we can um, choose how many refinement steps we want. And then lastly, what we need to do, especially if we want to add an inflation layer is put it in the volume mesh block. Uh, as opposed to the robust tetrahedral mesh block. Uh, this robust tetrahedral mesh is going to, uh, for lack of a better word, kind of obliterate um, the surface mesh that we uh, end up applying when we do our refined mesh and remesh surface blocks. Uh, the volume mesh block itself is gonna keep that, that surface mesh, the boundary layer that we've achieved or refinement that we've put on and allow that to propagate into the volume itself, which we'll see here in, in just a moment. But before we get into that cross section, let's talk about how we're going to set up the, the um, actual boundary layer itself. It's pretty simple um, using the ramp block. And all we really need to do is um, take the original um, you know, heat exchanger core in this case that we had and apply a little bit of extra thickness to it. So we simply just use our addition block, take the thickness that we used to define our original hex core, and in this case, add an inflation layer thickness to it. So we get a bit of a thicker um, core than we're actually going to end up print or simulate downstream. We take this core and we put it into our, um, our input for the, the ramp block. And then from there, we define the input min and output max and, and use that uh, extra body to define our inflation layer. So if I turn that on and this, <clears throat> we're going to pretty much use the intersection between the fluid volume and your, your thickened heat exchanger core in this case to, to help define that inflation layer. Do a quick cross section. Show the volumetric elements. <clears throat> and we can see that we've propagated inward with, um, with those tets as opposed to if we were to use the robust tetrahedral block, uh, we would lose that, um, that surface mesh and it would have um, for more or less uh, a uniform mesh throughout the, the volume itself. The last thing I want to, to point out is um, uh, a cleaning technique that we can use. So let me turn on a couple blocks really quick. I'm gonna turn on the refined mesh of the hot fluid domain, and I'm gonna turn on this collapse mesh vertices um, block as well, and then go to a saved view that I have. <clears throat> So the, the steps that I took for you know, this um, inflation layer meshing um, was the same approach for both the cold fluid domain and the hot fluid domain. When I got to the hot fluid domain, however, there ended up being uh, a handful of intersecting triangles that made the volume mesh um, crash. We have a couple techniques to help resolve intersecting triangles. And one of those is using this collapse mesh vertices block. So we can take uh, our handful of steps that take us to this refined surface mesh. And if we find that when we go to take this refined mesh and put it into the volume mesh block, it crashes due to intersecting triangles, we can use this collapse mesh vertices block to, to help get rid of some of those intersecting triangles. And we can see here that that's kind of what we did. So all it kind of does is we give a distance threshold to this block and it goes around and says, okay, all of the elements or vertices that lie within this distance, we're going to combine them um, into, into you know, <clears throat> fewer and 
basically all that's going to do is, is help clean the mesh for us. So I'm going to turn off now the refined mesh block and we'll see that it's just kind of um, defeatured it a little bit. Um, one you know, rule of thumb that we like to say is at the maximum, uh, we suggest that you use one third of your minimum feature size. So in this case, uh, 0.05 millimeters. Uh, ideally, we would use a distance threshold a bit uh, smaller than this. Um, the higher it goes, the, you know, you might still have those intersecting triangles and the more defeaturing you might uh, get throughout your, throughout your mesh. As always, um, I hope this was educational and inspiring for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to myself. You can find me on LinkedIn or anyone else at Entopology. Thank you and stay safe.